This is a comprehensive field test, demonstration, and review of the Hilberg Janu four season tent after one year of use. Hey there, this is Creation Images where I share my in the field landscape photography, the skills I've learned over 20 years of hiking and backpacking in the wilderness, as well as the insights and the inspirations that I've received along the way. If you're new here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, and ring the bell below so that you can receive notification every time I come up with a new adventure. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful to you and I really appreciate you being here. So thanks for watching. So a couple of weeks ago, I went up to uh, 14,000 foot Mount Bierstadt looking for winter. And unfortunately there wasn't just a whole lot of snow up there. So uh, a couple of weeks have passed and I've gone a little farther north up here to uh, Cameron Pass. And I think I'm gonna find plenty of winter. There's two mountains there. You got Thunder Mountain and Lulu Mountain. And I'm gonna go just to the right of Lulu Mountain in that valley there, that's Thunder Pass. And put my tent through its paces while I'm up there and hopefully get some great landscape photos as well. So right up there, that flat area is Thunder Pass. It's about a mile away. It is getting windy and cold right now. Colder than it was before. Uh, ambient temperature right now is about 10 degrees. And uh, tonight it's supposed to get down up on the pass to uh, two degrees Fahrenheit with uh, winds uh, about uh, 35 mile an hour wind gusts. So uh, it's gonna be a challenge to be up there and my tent is gonna have its work cut out for it. I've been actively winter backpacking for about two years now and I've certainly made a lot of mistakes. When I first started, the big mistake that I made was setting up my tent. It was a two season tent up above Timberline in the winter time. And in the middle of the night, a big windstorm came through and uh, collapsed the tent, basically just knocked it over with me in it. I uh, actually did a video on that called Stupid Hard Photography. But I learned my lesson on that trip and uh, bought a, a four season tent uh, exactly a year ago. It was a Hilberg Janu two uh, person tent. And uh, I made a lot of mistakes when I first started using it as well. You know what? I think I'm gonna need to stop somewhere so I can breathe and you can actually understand what I'm talking about. A year ago, I got my Hilberg Janu and like anything, there's a, a learning curve with any new equipment. And I took it up to the Raywa Wilderness in December, um, not really understanding how to anchor a, a four season tent in powder snow. So I actually went and gathered up a bunch of rocks, like 20 rocks and used them. I tied them to the guy lines and buried them in the snow, which was a lot of extra effort. And honestly, you often can't find rocks in the uh, winter time anyway. And what I found at the end of the weekend was where I had uh, compacted the snow all around those rocks had recrystallized and pretty much iced over. I had to use my ice axe to actually pry those rocks out. So you don't have to use rocks. That was a uh, one of the first mistakes I made uh, with the uh, Four Season Hilberg Janu. Um, so I learned my lesson there and I went out and I bought the actual Hilberg uh, winter stakes for the tents that were manufactured for that purpose. Took them up to Coney Lake in Indian Peaks Wilderness and uh, uh, set up my tent in a, a beautiful flat area, not realizing that it was actually uh, like a, a wind tunnel there. So the next morning I went to uh, uh, take my tent down and uh, it was in the middle of a ground blizzard and I ended up having to untie all of those stakes from the guy lines because I'd been paranoid I was going to lose the stakes in the snow. You don't have to tie your stakes to the guy lines. I'll show you the proper way how to do that later on in this video. So what I'm going to do next is get up to Thunder Pass. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of the uh, Hilberg Janu that I've learned over the last year and also show you hopefully the proper way to set one of those tents up up here in the Alpine winter time the environment that that tent was designed for so I'll see you up on the pass oh man it was rough getting up here the entire five miles up I was breaking trail through powder it never did crust over where you could just kind of walk on top of it and in some of the places it was actually really deep so 
it took me about it took me about five hours to go the five miles to get up here but uh the goal here is to get my tent set up right here on the pass where it's windy and really obnoxious and as i do that i want to talk about how you set the tent up and kind of the pros and cons of the hillberg janu so the first thing you want to do is have a nice packed area of snow i usually look for about a minimum of eight by five foot now this snow is already really windblown so i shouldn't have to pack it down too much but i'm going to go through this area and make a just a rectangle of pack down snow that I'll put where I'll put the tent. So the first thing this tent has going for it is the weight. It comes in just a little over seven pounds and for a four season tent with the kind of uh, durability and stability and uh, just all around a great tent uh, that's, that's a really pretty good uh, a pretty lightweight tent so the first thing you're gonna want to do is tie your tent to something that's not gonna blow away so the next thing that's great about this tent is that the uh, inner tent and the outer tent are all connected together. So when you set it up, you can set it all up in one piece, uh, both all at the same time. And then also, if it's windy or raining or snowing or whatever, the uh, inner tent is all sealed up. So you won't get any uh, moisture or snow or rain inside the tent. You gotta get the tent laid out flat to begin with to the best of your ability now the nice thing about this tent is the poles attach to the outside of the tent so you don't have to be trying to poke them through uh, uh, fabric layers they just clip onto the outside so that's a huge pro I just had a lull in the, the wind which is nice now there's three poles to this tent two cross poles and then this one that's bent in the middle and uh, it's going to give the tent a lot of stability so that one needs to wait for a little while so this is exactly why you got to tie your tent to something but poles are in it which means you can just keep keep building it up even as the, the wind picks up so here we have here we have the pocket for the last pole Hopefully you can see that right there. It just slides in and then this one's going to wrap this pole going to wrap around to the other side and hold the other two poles stable. I'll show you that in just a second. Really the ease of setup is one of the, uh, the main pros to this. Um, as you could see earlier, that was crazy when the wind was blowing the tent all over the place. Um, didn't matter. The poles were in there and all I had to do is wrestle it back down and, and keep working. So you can see how this third pole goes across the, the face of the other two. And that's going to be part of the structure and the stability of this tent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hook all of these clips onto the tent. Oh, here comes the wind. And this is a function that I could do with my mittens on, which is great because in this wind and this cold, I definitely don't want to take the mittens off. So I guess basically the first big pro is the ease of setting this tent up by yourself in 
a windstorm in the mountains, in the snow, with your mittens on, you can get this thing totally set up, which is just awesome. All of the loops here that have the uh, guy lines, you can actually wrap that loop around the tent pole. So when this gets stretched out uh, and the wind comes up, it's not gonna be uh, putting pressure on the fabric itself of the tent. It's only gonna be putting pressure on the pole, which is obviously a lot stronger than fabric. One of the challenges I've had when I'm trying to set the tent up in snow like this and a lot of wind is it kind of gets distorted. And uh, I initially started by getting all those anchors, all the corners and everything down, but you really have to make sure that they're stretched all the way out. So you have to have some, some slack. And so the challenge I have is I can't get all of the clips on. Um, it's just too taut and I'm afraid of, of ripping the fabric. So uh, for tonight, they're gonna be uh, not all the way set up unless I can figure, unless I can figure that part out. Uh, that's one of the challenges. One of the other pros is all the guy lines are already attached to the tent, which is great because you don't have to worry about trying to tie ropes onto your tent. Uh, the drawback to that is they get really tangled up like this and uh, these uh, uh, little tensioners get, uh, lock, uh, get stuck in the, uh, the clips. And so you end up a lot, uh, spending a lot of time fighting the, uh, the, uh, the uh, guy lines there. But I would say the uh, fact that you have them attached, there's no tying, there's no figuring anything out, far out uh, exceeds the, the drawback of them getting tangled up. As you can see, I did get those uh, clips all attached here finally, as well as the ones there at the front. I did have to spend a little bit of time wrestling by pulling the, uh, the sides of the tent out, stretching them side to side, making sure that the poles were all the way stuck inside the pockets there. Uh, my next step is to get all the stakes spread out and uh, also get the, uh, the final fly put up on the top. So when you're setting these tension lines up, the guy lines, you want to find the most packed snow you can and stretch the uh, guy line out quite a ways. And that's why I did a full eight by uh, five area that I packed down. And the best way to do this is to stretch it out as far as you can see it, and then go in a couple of inches here and just use your hand to carve a groove in that packed snow as deep as you as deep as your hand will go and then you can just set that uh that stake in sideways and you don't want to have it too taut to begin with because then it'll just pull out so now it's setting down in there a couple of inches and i can pile some snow up on top of it pack it down They're super easy to adjust back and forth, and uh, they lock in place uh, right, right in there in that little groove. So the tensioners on the Hilberg is is awesome. So now I've got my Hilberg all set up, and something that's important when you think about where you're setting up your tent is to uh, make sure it's parallel to the prevailing wind. So as you can see, the wind is coming across the pass here and uh, I want to make sure that it's parallel. So if I had had the, the tent sideways, uh, that would have caused a lot, of, a lot of problems. Hi there. So those are the pros that I can think of uh, for the Hilberg right now. All right, so before I get in there, I do want to talk about one of the uh, cons I see to this tent. The vestibule is nice and long. It really stretches out. But when you have all this snow, and you get inside, you can see there's really a tiny space and there's just no room up and down um, in this space. So while you could throw some boots or something in here, um, it's, uh, 
it, it might be a little bit less usable. Um, I've actually uh, taken a lot of the snow in the past and like actually dug out some of the snow so that I had more room inside that vestibule. It's just not that, that tall. And then the other thing that I've had challenges with getting in and out, I really like how this, this top fly comes across so that if it's raining or whatever, you can open up this bottom fly and, and the, the drip line is out a little ways, but it creates a lot of tension right here. And when you're unzipping the uh, tent, first of all, these two uh, uh, zippers are, are kind of small. They're hard to manipulate with uh, mittens. And uh, a lot of times they'll bind right up there at the top when you're trying to get in and out. There was another pro I wanted to uh, show you while I was inside the tent. Um, I was talking earlier about the inner tent and the outer tent um, and how those two things are attached together. And so you can actually set up everything together um, all at once. Uh, but the nice thing is how versatile this tent is because you can actually use the inner tent and the outer tent separately. Um, so if you can look in between here, you can see how the inner tent and the outer tent are attached um, here. You can actually just unclip those and uh, take the outer tent, which is basically just like a giant fly um, backpacking, you know, in the summertime um, so forth and just set it up normally. Um, of course, if you did that, you would have ground, you know, um, instead of having a tent floor, but you can actually buy a tent floor that'll go on the bottom and, and attach, which is pretty cool. Or you can also buy a conversion kit to uh, attach the poles to the inner tent and be able to just take the inner tent. Now the inner tent is not waterproof, so you'd have to be um, more careful with that um, if there is any chance of rain. Um, but in any case, this is a very versatile system, um, very warm, strong in the winter time, and also you can use it um, in kind of a module effect uh, during the summer. So I was going to talk about the uh, last con that I uh, really think about. And, and to me, this, this one is kind of a big one. And as you can see, it's the, uh, the headroom in this tent. I'm actually sitting directly on the snow right now. And when I sit up straight, my head is actually touching the, ac the actual peak of the uh, tent. Um, it's nice and wide side to side because we have that uh, that third pole that kind of stretches things out to the sides, um, which that, that is really nice. So if you're looking for something that is going to really, um, uh, be, be durable and, uh, be able to withstand, um, howling winds, um, Hilberg is definitely a great option. I actually wanted to mention one more con that I see as a uh, landscape photographer. And this one also is kind of a big one. And that is, you just, you just can't see out. So if you want to be able to see what the weather is doing, you know, you can, you can unzip and, uh, and you can look one direction, but uh, one direction is about all you got. So anyway, I think uh, now I'm gonna kind of tuck myself away in my tent and get everything all cozy and enjoy being out of the wind and the weather for a while. That's delicious. It's getting really windy out there.
so that was a pretty long night. Uh, the uh, first part of the night was was actually probably the worst. Is around 7:30 or so. There were some wind gusts that were actually strong enough to compel me to um, sit up and uh, push against the the sides and the roof of the tent because the whole tent was just getting distorted um, in the wind, um, and I didn't want any of the poles to break. Uh, but uh, that that only lasted for a couple of hours, and I I, I probably had to do that five or six times. Um, and then it calmed down. Um, it's still gusting. I mean, right now it's not uh, blowing at all, but every couple of minutes or so the wind picks up. Um, but uh, overall, it was great um, in terms of, you know, just the, the stability. I mean, I'm, I'm still here the next day. The tent is still here and that's fantastic. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of frost um, in here. It was about, uh, about two degrees, I'm guessing. Um, and so anytime I sit up, my head brushes up against the, uh, the, uh, the ceiling there, the roof. And that's no fun when you get a shower of, uh, frost down on you, but, uh, that's just part of winter camping, I suppose. If I had to, uh, make a recommendation for this tent, I would say this tent is fantastic for anybody like an individual person, um, uh, with, with a lot of gear, um, just, uh, they call it a two-man tent. I really think it's a one-person tent. Um, if uh, if you wanted to have two people in this tent, they would need to really like each other. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I I highly recommend this tent, though. This is this is a great tent. Um, so I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, um, consider subscribing. And I will see you next time.